Hi, I'm James Tanner, the Genealogy Star blog, and I'm talking to Judy Rushell, who was our keynote speaker this morning in, uh, at Roots Tech 2014. Howdy. Hi, Jim. Howdy. Um, how did you get involved in blogging? <laughs> That's my always my interesting question. Well, keep in mind that one of my many careers was as a newspaper reporter. So oh, the idea okay. of writing on a regular basis doesn't scare me at all. And I just had so many things I wanted to say. Um, things about the law, things about genealogy, and it seemed to be a perfect fit. Oh, well, we talked a moment ago about our legal, combined legal <laughs> careers. <laughs> Uh, and you uh, mentioned some things I thought would be interesting. You were a you taught at Rutgers. I, I still teach at Rutgers oh, Law do. School in oh. New Jersey. I teach appellate advocacy, oh. and I'm the faculty advisor to the Moot Court Board. And before that, I had been in private practice, and before that, as a federal prosecutor in New Jersey. Yeah, and I, we shared that because I was a federal public defender. How's that for? <laughs> And those guys pinned my ears back on a regular basis. The <laughs> anyway, good folks. The... So yeah, we had uh, both have got that kind of thing. And also, I taught college level, uh, although no law, a little bit of law, but mostly Spanish. For people, always ask me strange questions about things like that. But... Absolutely. <laughs> um, really enjoyed your comments this morning. So, and we share. You know, we would have shared a uh, my, uh, Mayflower descendancy, but... <laughs> I, I only wish, you know, so much of what we get in these family stories is wishful thinking. Oh, I know. You know the Cherokee princess, oh, the yeah. three brothers who came to America, and one went that. north and one went south. I never understood why the one who went west was never heard from again. Yeah. <laughs> but we've, we've all got the stories. Sometimes we can hope they've got that little nugget of truth and sometimes they're just totally made up. Oh, and I, it's interesting. Yeah, we deal with that because I, you know, I work in the Mesa Family Search Library, so I work with patrons every week. You know, people coming walking in the door, and they come in the door with their story. Mm -hmm. And usually, I listen to the story. One of those, of course, is that one of our ancestors was an Indian princess or an Indian from a tribe, and. Um, Surprisingly enough, I've had two or three of them where it actually was true. <laughs> well, they, particularly out in the West, out. you're going yeah. to find a fair number of Native Americans, and there are some parts of the American Southeast where you're going to get it. Mm -hmm. But for most of us, you know, we've got colonial American ancestry, we've got recent European immigrants, we don't right. have Native American. Yeah. So how did you get involved? This is the other half of it. Besides the blogging, how did you get involved in the genealogy aspect? As an attorney, that would seem to be, at least from my experience with all my attorney friends, that would not be the first thing people would choose. You know, first of all, I come from a family on my mother's side, which has a lot of Scots-Irish. Oh, okay. That means storytellers. Okay. We would sit out at my grandparents' farm in the summers under the trees with the bonfire, with the sing-alongs and the stories. So I grew up with a sense of family story. It isn't all that different when you think about it, when you're trying to determine if a family story is true, or you're trying to decide if what your client is telling you is true. Oh, that's very similar. You know, we're, we're still trying to get to the bottom of things, get to the truth, find out what the records show. It isn't proof beyond a reasonable doubt. We don't follow that standard in genealogy, but we do want to know what's real. That's an interesting question. Yeah, you mentioned that. Have you, have you thought about the, uh, I know this morning you put up the genealogical proof standard. Uh, going back in the history of genealogy, uh, when you go back to the 1930s, early 1900s, uh, some of the most influential genealogists were attorneys. And because of that, there was an overlay of the legalese, proof, burden of proof type things that, that came into genealogy. Right. Have you ever examined that or thought about that? I have. Of course, I'm a trustee of the Board for Certification of Genealogists, yeah. and, and we are the author the, of the Genealogy Standards Manual. And there was a deliberate shift from the language of the law with preponderance of evidence to the genealogical proof standard because it isn't a one-for-one. One. 
you know, we're not looking in genealogy for that feather on one side of the scale that's going to tip it to being more accurate than mm -hmm. not. But by the same token, we're not looking for proof beyond a reasonable doubt because we're dealing with human endeavors where that's not possible. So I think using our own language for our own field with a genealogical proof standard gives us more guidance and helps us stay within the realm of possibility. Well, it's interesting because the board has had a sort of a central position in that. And uh, obviously, if there had been anything else out there in the, uh, you know, with a sort of a reasonable uh, level of, of confidence that you could believe in, uh, you know, I would have brought it up. <laughs> sure. So. I mean, you know, we've got the, the BCG and ICAPGEN, the other yeah. certifying organization, credentialing organization, both basically follow the same concepts, mm -hmm. all of which came from men like Milton Rubicam and the, the, the real Donald Blinds Jacobus, mm -hmm. the, the real originators of genealogy as a, an academic pursuit, as something that is on a par with the law or history or any other field of research. So just kind of to wrap this up is if there is, you know, it, it, from my standpoint and what I've tried to tell people is that you can't simply accept anything that you find. You have to use some kind of level of, of sorting it out, giving proof, adding weight, making a decision as to whether it's true or false. And, and I think that... And without yeah, that... Then you have rumor It's and, fiction. Yeah, fiction and rumor. That the standard comment is genealogy without documentation is fiction. I absolutely, absolutely agree. Thank you so much for Thank being you. here. Thank <laughs> you.